So we're talking about Batman films. We're talking about the films by He Who Must Not Be Named. I mean, Joel Schumacher. <laughs> no bat butts. No nipples, no butts, no crotches. <laughs> <clears throat> The, the nipples, uh, believe it or not, were almost the only redeeming thing about that, the uh, Batman and Robin. <laughs> now, are you saying on Batman and Robin, or are you saying because they put them on Batgirl, too? Well, I'm just saying in general, I mean, <laughs> better than the rest of the movie. You know, I have to admit, that is, in, in Batman and Robin, there are those movies that Uma Thurman looks phenomenal. And there are those movies where Uma Thurman looks like she got ran over by the ugly truck. <laughs> I honestly have to say, as Poison Ivy, I thought it was a movie where she actually looked good, and she played a sultry, uh, seductive Poison Ivy. Now, I did not agree with all the weird, like, the head cone things that she had on. She kind of looked like in the movie Little Nicky when Kevin Nealon got the, the breasts on his head. That was kind of what it looked like. And at first, I thought Arnold would, be, would have been a good Mr. Freeze because, you know, he had the accent and he was big. But when they made him <laughs> nothing but a bunch of puns, one pun after the other, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just like, chill. Yeah, there's, there's, everything is bad about that movie, right down to the bad credit card. That, that oh, don't. <laughs> the, <laughs> don't you know, without it. Come on. That is just the worst. That, that is campier than Adam West's Batman. I think the I, Adam I, West Batman is actually... Uh, better with continuity than, than that movie. Mm -hmm. You know, it's bad when the bat credit card can outdo the bat pole, the bat phone, the bat radar, the bat shield, the, the bat DNA analyzer, the bat dog pooper scooper. <laughs> I love in the old Batman movie where the shark is like jumped up on him and it's like the worst <laughs> fake shark you've ever seen in your life. And they're on the hel they're on the helicopter this is Lagan, and there's a shark like waiting for him. I know, I know. Like that's the right moment. I, I, that's like one of my favorite scenes. And and did, they, did anybody else think that Jim Carrey was actually trying to play the Joker? It, that's what it seemed like to me. I don't know. That, I don't know about him. Problems I, I have with that entire like just about every Batman movie up to Batman Begins, I've got a problem with. Except I love the old Adam West, the original Adam know. West, all the villains. Where they had now, all which, of them submarine now, and Now who was back who was Catwoman in the Adam West one? Was it Lee Merriweather that was in the movie? Or was it Eartha Kitt? I'm trying to remember. It was uh it was either Lee Merriweather or uh Julie Newmar? Yeah, uh, Julie Newmar, I think. I think it might but I'm be not sure. I have to look that up because I haven't seen it in a little bit. That was always the weirdest thing for me was watching the shows and they would not show the shows in order. So one day I'd watch it, and you'd have Julie Newmar or Lee Merriweather Catwoman. And then the episode that came on right after that was Eartha Kitt Catwoman. Mm -hmm. and, and nothing. Eartha Kitt was, uh, she brought the purr to Catwoman. But it was, for, for me, in continuity-wise, it was very weird to have that many Catwomen at yet one time. Now, I wouldn't mind if it was that many Catwoman, if it was Anne Hathaway and it was um, Michelle Pfeiffer. That'd be fine. Those Catwomen can just come on. Just bring it on. Oh, yeah. Bring I love Anne Hathaway. I thought she did a great job as Catwoman. Anne Hathaway. <laughs> I'm telling you, I love, I, I love Anne Hathaway. I'm just, just going to say it. And, and people were like, oh, she can't play Catwoman. She can't play yeah. Catwoman. I mean, come on. She, went, she played Catwoman, and, and then she went on and played a prostitute in Les Mis. Oh, I've never seen that. I know. I really want to see that. I love her. You haven't seen Les Mis? I haven't. I know. You have not seen the movie where, I, Wolver I, you I, have not seen the, where I Wolverine so is being chased by Jor-El. <laughs> and he's on the run with Catwoman's <laughs> child. I have to see and it. And the child I I was in the care. And he sings. Bel and he sings. And he sings. It's like, that's my main thing. The child of Catwoman was in the care of Bellatrix Lestrange and Borat. <laughs> And I'm not lying. It was Bellatrix Lestrange and Borat. I'm going to have to see it. Is it, can I see, is it out now? It's out now. Go buy it. I'm going to go buy it. I'll go buy it tomorrow. You can go um, buy it at but, Walmart for $29.95. I was so great. <laughs> Spokesperson. No, but I had heard, um, I was reading an article on Anne Hathaway, and as much as I love her, I try to follow everything like that she does. And I had heard that people make like, websites um, like for hate 
towards her. And I'm like, and it even said, like, she doesn't do anything wrong. All the parts she plays, everybody loves. It's just that people just love to hate her. And I'm like, oh, there's always those you just love to hate. Ah, uh, but she's so she's so cute. I don't know how anybody can hate her. What was that, Chief? Oh, so I I don't have the kind of time to just just hate celebrities. I know, I know there's a whole like site based on it. I don't know. Hate someone I don't even know. All no. right, deleting my work. site about Sarah Jessica Parker. <laughs> oh, that's warranted. That's okay. No. <laughs> I actually was talking about that with a friend today. A friend of mine today, he saw Mars Attacks. And I told him, I said, you know, it is bad in Mars Attacks when they put Sarah Jessica Parker's head on the dog, dog's body. That's the best she's ever looked in her entire life. <laughs> and yeah. the video was taken off of YouTube because Sarah Jessica Parker got mad. Uh... But anyway, we, we digress. Now, Lee Merriweather was Catwoman in the Batman movie, by the way. Okay, so it was Lee Merriweather. So I would be so we watched the show. It was Julie Newmar and then Eartha Kitt. Okay. Um, now I got something for you guys. I got something for you. 1994. Let's go to 1994. You know, uh, Clinton was in office. <laughs> We're not telling you what he was doing in the office, but he <laughs> was in the office. <laughs> Hillary was. Hillary was someplace else. And Chelsea, <laughs> who cares about Chelsea? But 1994, a little movie was made. A movie based off of the first family of comics. And that movie was The Fantastic Four. Uh. <laughs> now this is a bootleg copy of the unreleased 1994 Fantastic Four film. Now, that is how bad it was, is that it was unreleased, and I own a bootleg. Got it on eBay. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> I bought this because I was just like, you know, ooh, Fantastic Four. Uh, it, this is rare. I want it. Um, worst movie, in my opinion. Has, it, you saw clips of it on, on YouTube, right, Chief? I watched almost the whole movie on YouTube in and, and snippets. <laughs> Let's put it this way. There is a very good reason why this was not released. And in, and in some aspects, some, some people may say the reboots should not have been released either. But I will give you this, Jessica Alba in skin-tight uniform. <laughs> the Silver Surfer is cool in that movie too, in the second one. The Silver Surfer was cool. I just wanted him, when he came up and he saw like Reed Richards, just to go, Welcome to the Na Matrix, Neo. <laughs> <laughs> because it was Lawrence Fishburne doing the voice of the, of the Silver Surfer. Uh, and that was good. The one, my gripe was, why was Galactus a cloud? I, if you watch that really close at the end, you can see the shadow of his helmet on that cloud almost. Right. So his, his, head is heading in there, his heading into the uh, machinery or whatever, heading towards Galactus. You can see, I swear you can see the shadow. Of the you big can. You can. It's, 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 it's this. It's the helmet. Right, and you, you, but I just assume he's just so large that's just his shadow coming. You can't really see him because he's so immense that, uh, that you just, just get a glimpse of his shadow at the end. Now, I remember uh, at that time there was the show uh, Charmed. I love Charmed. And everybody was crazy that Julian McMahon was going to play Doctor Doom because he was in Charmed. Mm-hmm. And everybody, all the all the fans of Charmed were like, "Oh, we gotta go see this movie because he's in it. Oh, we love him!" Ah. And he didn't do too bad. He wasn't. He didn't have a Latvian accent or anything. And really, I thought Doctor Doom was kind of a pushover in those films. I thought the bulk of that was the special effects that they put into those films was the bulk of what made those films pretty cool. Uh, that and Stan Lee playing the mailman. Stan Lee. <laughs> I hear a strange panting noise. My dog still is in the room with me. Right now. <laughs> He's here. hearing this. <laughs> and, and then the sonic screwdriver goes off. <laughs> that's, that's not me, I swear it. But uh, one of the <coughs> Fantastic Four from 1994 is that that was just made, that was made by Roger Corman, I think, and, and it was made really fast, like, to retain the rights to the Fantastic Four. They were going to lose the rights to it or something. And so they hired Roger Corman to come in and direct that thing in like a week or something. And, th and they just pretty much threw it together and it was just never released. But it was done solely for, for copyrights or something. 
Let's see. It says here, from the pages of Marvel Comics, the Fantastic Four spring to life in the entertaining feature film by famed director Roger Corman. Filmed in 1994 with only a meager budget and minimal resources. It was never given a theatrical release. Based on characters created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Written by Craig J. Nevius and Kevin Rock. Directed by Ole Sassone. Or Sassone. There, I just plugged every, all of y'all. <laughs> now you can get your royalty check for a dime. Okay, there's your royalty check. <laughs> yeah, it was done by Roger Corman. Um... The effects are, not, I mean, the effects are bad yeah, for a low-budget film. The one thing, the thing does look pretty cool. I have to give him that. The thing looks pretty cool. Uh, Johnny Storm does not. And um, I don't know. There's a character in here. I think he's called, like, the Jeweler or something like that. And he's, and he's kind of like the Mole King. They try to, like, make this character like the Mole King. Um and Doctor Doom, I'm trying to look at this picture of Doctor Doom. I mean, he's got the mask and everything, but it looks like he's got a, his mask the way it is in the mouth. It almost looks like a Green Lantern symbol. <laughs> so maybe Doctor Doom was actually a Green Lantern at one time. I, I hate when they just make up a, a villain for a movie or a cartoon. It just has never once been in, in continuity. I just, and I just, I can't stand it. Hold on. Let's talk. What about Harley Quinn? Well, okay. There are exceptions to the rule, I'll give you that. But I'm, I'm talking... Like, we just gave a good example. The, the, like, what was that? Was that? I mean, if that guy was in contact... I mean, that's got to be so obscure. Who was going to know that? Nobody's going to know that. But, like, if you look at, like, uh, the animated series of Batman or, or those, like, they always created characters like that. Uh, well, they, Clock King. Clock King. Was one, uh, you know, that you never really heard about, or Baby Doll. There was Baby Doll in the in the animated series, and if she was in the comics, correct me, correct me if I was wrong, because sometimes I do get wrong. I think that the animated series from I think the Batman animated series gets gets a pass just because it was so well written and it was written and it was taken really seriously, and uh, and I think that the people who made it really really cared about making Batman. Batman, you know, I, I think it really, it really brought what Batman is uh, and what's great about Batman out to a, to a big audience. And, and I correct, think that series is that that deserves all the accolades, in my opinion. And correct me if I'm wrong, best Joker ever. Oh yeah, Mark Hamill's the Joker, hands down. That's right, kids. Luke Skywalker was the Joker. And to this day, to this day, he is still touted as the best Joker ever. So when the video, when the video games Arkham Asylum and Arkham City came out, and he was said, "I'm gonna be the Joker again," I mean that just that and, him, and Kevin Conroy coming back and doing Batman, it was that was the dynamic duo coming back together. But uh, and then uh, Tim Daly as Superman and those in the animated movies. <laughs> You know All what these... I love? You know what I loved about the Superman show was uh, Mr. Mix Six Pitalik. Yeah, yeah. All the fifth dimension weirdness with with Superman and and uh, the fifth dimension and getting him to say his name backwards is the only way you can get him to to disappear. But yeah. I loved it. I loved it because he would pop up and be like, "Hey, Superman, what are you doing? I'm here to ruin your life. That's because I you can't say my name." <laughs> <laughs> that is Gilbert Where Godfrey, was, ladies and gentlemen. Was that that was good? I, I love Gilbert. That Godfrey. was good, but yeah. I love it because I say I call him Mister Mix Six Pitalik because that's how you say his name. But remember the old Super Friends, Mitzelflick. Mitzelflick. Meanwhile, at the Hall of Justice. Oh my gosh, it's so funny that you mentioned Super Friends because we've been watching it nonstop for about a month. The Super Friends. 